Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks under the direction of Al Lewis. Well, the fall semester is definitely upon us, and our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, has more or less settled down to her accustomed routine. Yes, and like many of my fellow teachers, I'm a firm believer in the old adage, early to bed. Only I've switched it a little. I believe that early to bed, early to rise, makes a gal sleepy, poor, and bored. (laughs) So whenever possible, I try to get some male faculty member at Madison to take me out for an evening. Any male faculty member will do, as long as he teaches biology and is named Philip Boynton. (laughs) Last Thursday at breakfast, my landlady asked for a blow-by-blow. Weren't you supposed to have a date with Mr. Boynton last night, Connie? Yes, Mrs. Davis, I was supposed to, but he couldn't make it. But, Connie, uh, I thought that twice a week you and Mr. Boynton... Well, I thought that last night was your night to howl. I did howl, but... I did howl, but he still wouldn't take me out. (laughs) Mrs. Davis, I'm competing with a new and dangerous interest. You mean Mr. Boynton got another batch of guinea pigs? (laughs) No, he's joined the volunteer fire department. And unlike the old-fashioned kind, this group insists on practically the same tests as regular firemen. They practice at least twice a week. Well, it was nice to have almost known him. (laughs) But, Connie, you can't give up that easily. Even if Mr. Boynton is so interested in firefighting that he's joined the volunteers, there is still a way you can see him. Start a fire? (laughs) (laughs) Certainly not. You've simply got to get interested in the same thing that interests him. There's nothing like throwing yourself into a man's work. I wonder how he'd like me, rare or well done. (laughs) I'm serious, Connie. You've got to help him with his practice. What's Mr. Boynton's current assignment? The high ladder rescue. He gets his test in a few days. It consists of lugging a sack of meal down a ladder. I've got it. This is your big chance. Surely he'd prefer you to a sack of meal. (laughs) As far as Mr. Boynton's concerned, it's probably optional. (laughs) Wait a minute. There is a way I can help out. He hasn't got a house to put his ladder up against. Now, if I could find one for him... You're both welcome to this house, Connie. That's very sweet of you, Mrs. Davis, but where would you live? Oh, I... (laughs) This is only a one-story house. He's got a pretty high ladder. Then, uh, how about your principal's home? The Conklins have a two-story house. Say, that's right. But Mr. Conklin would never let us use it. He'd be afraid the paint would be scratched or something. (laughs) Then use it without his knowing it. Wait until he goes out for the evening. But suppose he doesn't go out. Connie, who's coming to drive you to school this morning? Walter Denton. And who's Walter's girlfriend? Harriet Conklin. And who better than Walter would know how to get rid of Mr. Conklin for an evening? (laughs) Hand me my hatchet and grease up the pole. Here goes Connie Brooks' girl, Hotfoot. (laughs) You certainly take good care of this car, Walter. Even the windows look spotless. They should. I took all the glass out. (laughs) But you said when you first came aboard that there's something you want to ask me. What is it, Miss Brooks? Well, first of all, you're still going with Harriet Conklin, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still trying to, but I haven't seen much of Harriet this week. Old Marblehead, uh, Mr. Conklin, (laughs) made her stay home every night. And worse than that, he stays home with her. (laughs) Well, Walter, I'll come right to the point. We've got to get him out of the house tonight, if only for a few hours. Why tonight? Because Mr. Boynton's got to practice ladder rescue. And if you ask me what ladder he's going to rescue, I'll slug you. (laughs) You see, Mr. Boynton's joined the volunteer fire department. Oh, I know. So have I. I've been practicing for those tests, too. But your folks don't have a two-story house. That's all right. I don't have a ladder either. (laughs) Mr. Boynton said I could borrow his as soon as he finds a place to practice. Oh, good. Now, if we can get Mr. Conklin out of the house tonight, we can use his place. Well, 
Frankly, Miss Brooks, we'd have a much better chance of getting him out of the house three days from now. What happens three days from now? Well, that's one day after his 10-day free trial period on a new television set expires. <laughs> and it's also one day before his 10-day free trial on the next set begins. <laughs> you mean he just orders sets on trial? Sure. Well, at that rate, he can keep getting free television till the whole thing blows over. <laughs> you see, that's what's so tough about tonight. Plus which, if he thought somebody wanted him to go out, he'd be doubly sure to stay home. He's like a child that way. You know, perverse. You're right, Walter. Say, wait a minute. That gives me an idea. Maybe we can use child psychology on him. What happens when you tell a kid he must eat his spinach? Would you mind using another vegetable? <laughs> now, don't you see, Walter? Some people just naturally resent suggestion. I get it. If you say Mr. Conklin is sick, he'll say he's well. Or if you insist he ought to stay home, he'll want to go out. Miss Brooks, you've got something. Thanks, Walter. And when you find out what it is, be sure and let Mr. Boynton in. <laughs> How many times must I tell you, Harriet, that a principal's office is not the place to discuss personal matters? But, Daddy, I just want to know if Walter Denton can come over to our house tonight. And the answer, as it has been for the past two weeks, is no. <sighs> Daddy, you're frustrating me. Don't you see how deeply I care for Walter? Don't you realize that someday we're going to be married? Married? <laughs> it's no use arguing, Father. Mother's often told me that when she had her mind made up to marry you, nothing could change it. Not even me. <laughs> but, Harriet, this is a school, not a Lonesome Hearts Club. I don't want you seeing Denton, and that's final. Now get ready for your first class. All right, Daddy, I'll go. But remember this. Nothing or nobody can keep Walter and me apart indefinitely. Love will find a way for us as it has for others. Even if we have to elope, we'll someday, somehow... Uh, good morning, Harriet. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Harriet. Goodbye, Miss Brooks. Walter Denton. Miss Brooks, I'd like to put a question to you as a woman. One minute, I'll get in the mood. <laughs> question, Mr. Conklin. What can a girl possibly see in Walter Denton? Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Conklin. Different people see different things in each one of us. For instance, I'm sure that certain girls can see as much in Walter as certain men see in me. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> now then, what did you want to see me about, Miss Brooks? I just wanted to know if I could stop by your house tonight. I'd like to discuss a few changes in curriculum. Well, yes, I suppose you can see me tonight. Of course, it doesn't have to be tonight. I know you're home practically every night. That's true, that's true. When I get home after a day's work, I like to stay put. My grandmother was the same way. <laughs> Wild horses couldn't get her out of the house once she started nudging 70. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that my reasons for staying at home differ greatly from those of your grandmother. I have my books, my family, and other cultural pursuits. Oh, I know. Who do you like in the wrestling match tonight? Well, I think Tiger Schlepkovich will fracture the devil man. <laughs> Me too. Isn't television a great boon? Yes, it is. Especially to those who don't get around much anymore. <laughs> Miss Brooks, I, I don't like... blame people of advancing years for staying home evenings. After all, it's nice to be within easy reach of your favorite chair, your pipe and slippers, your doctor's phone number. <laughs> My doctor's... Miss Brooks, the reasons I have for staying at home have nothing to do with the advancing years or ill health. I can do anything today that I could do ten years ago. Why, I could go out every night of the week if I wanted to. I must admire your spirit, sir, but after all, I'm sure that wouldn't be necessary. Not as far as your wife is concerned. 
Although any, almost any woman would get just the tiniest bit envious if she heard that a young principal like Jason Brill takes his wife dancing twice a week. Jason Brill? Dancing? Only last Friday evening I saw him at the Silver Slipper Cafe. The Silver Slipper? Did he say anything about me? Why, yes, come to think of it, he did. I think he said, how's old stick-in-the-mud Osgood? <laughs> what? Why, that... You, you... Hello! Well, you don't have to bite my head off, dear. Don't dare me, you old... <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, it's you, darling. Hello. <laughs> I forgot to mention it before you left this morning, uh, but this is my thorough cleaning day, and you'll have to pick up some things for dinner tonight. All right, Martha, I'll... I'll uh, just a second. Why should we have to do any shopping today? We're going out to dinner. What did you say, dear? I said we're going out to dinner. Osgood, I think we have a bad connection. <laughs> What's bad about it? I can hear you perfectly. I know, dear, but for a moment there, I thought you said we were going out to dinner. That's exactly what I did say. But isn't it a little early to be celebrating? Our anniversary isn't until June. <laughs> Martha, Martha, we're going out to dinner, and then we're going to the Silver Slipper to dance. I'll see you later. Goodbye. Well, goodbye, Osgood. Ah, too old to go dancing, am I? Miss Brooks, what was it Jason Brill called me again? I can't be sure, but I think it was Let's Live a Little Osgood. <laughs> Starring Eve Arden will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Reader's Digest reports the results of one of the most extensive experiments in dentifrice history. Yes, Reader's Digest reports the very same research which proves brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. And here are additional important facts. Over a two-year period, the Colgate way stopped more decay for more people than ever before reported in dentifrice history. Yes, the Colgate way of brushing teeth right after eating stopped tooth decay best, better than any other home method of oral hygiene. Even more important, there were no new cavities whatever for more than one out of three who used Colgate's as directed. No other dentifrice, ammoniated or not, has proof of such results. The best results ever reported for a dentifrice of any type. And you should know that Colgate Dental Cream, while not mentioned by name, was the only toothpaste used in the research reported in July Reader's Digest. Yes, Colgate Dental Cream, and only Colgate Dental Cream, was used in this research. So always use Colgate's to clean your breath while you clean your teeth. And when you follow the Colgate way, Colgate Dental Cream stops tooth decay best. <laughs> Lunch period and I arrived at the school cafeteria at the same time, and by an unusual daily coincidence, I found myself sitting opposite Mr. Boynton. I was so pleased at the way I'd secured a place for him to practice for his firefighting test that I could hardly wait to tell him about it, so I didn't. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I found a place for you to practice your ladder rescue. <laughs> My ladder rescue? That's wonderful, Miss Brooks, but I didn't know you were so interested in the VFL. VFL? Volunteer fire laddies. <laughs> oh, but I am, Mr. Boynton I think putting out fires is wonderful So much better than just letting them go on <laughs> But aren't you going to ask me whose home we're honoring with your ladder tonight? Oh, yes, whose? The Conklins The Conklins? But, oh, Miss Brooks, you know how Mr. Conklin stands on extracurricular activities Even though I feel it's my civic duty to participate, Mr. Conklin would never... Mr. Conklin isn't going to know about it He and Mrs. Conklin are going out for the evening you see, Mr. Boynton, I'd like to assist you tonight. Well, what can you do, Miss Brooks? Well, there's no law that says you have to carry a sack of meal down the ladder, is there? Well, certainly not. I could carry a sack of flour. <laughs> a sack of potatoes or an old mattress or a barrel. You're getting warmer. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, I know how important this test is to you, and I want to help you. Oh, that's all right, Miss Brooks. I can carry the sack down by myself. <laughs> this boy isn't paying attention. <laughs> Mr. Boynton, what I had in mind was something more practical for you to rehearse with. Like what? 
Like me. <laughs> you could carry me down the ladder. After all, I don't weigh any more than a sack of meal. Well, that's true, and both your general shapes are about I'll to... make the... <laughs> work out fine, Mr. Barnton. Well, I don't know. It's pretty risky. After all, there's a big difference between having a sack of meal over my shoulder and having you over my shoulder. I can't tell you exactly what it is, but I know there's a difference. <laughs> if, as, and when you find out what that difference is, you're going to be one surprised fire, laddie. <laughs> Certainly nice of Harriet Conklin to let me use her room for this ladder practice, but I hope her folks don't come home. Oh, they won't. Mr. Conklin's whooping it up tonight, probably painting the town gray. <laughs> Besides, Walter Denton will be practicing with us. And we are well chaperoned. Darn Thank it. goodness. <laughs> if you're going to pass your test, Mr. Boynton, we'd better start. Uh-uh. Looks pretty far down to the ground from here. Oh, it's only two stories, and I'll be very careful how I hold you. That's for sure. <laughs> Now, we'll use the fireman's carry. First, put both your arms over my left shoulder. No, 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 let's see. Put your left arm over my right shoulder while I put my right arm under your left one and place my left leg on, on the second rung of the ladder. N now, your right leg goes to the right of mine over the windowsill, and I... <laughs> Miss Brooks. Yes, Mr. Boynton? Did you notice what happened to my left arm? <laughs> Barton, but I think there's something slightly wrong with the directions you've been giving me. Why? I'm carrying you. <laughs> Sorry, I should know that fireman's carry by now. All I have to do is get you over my right shoulder. Here we go. Yep. Oh, come now. <laughs> Are you all right, Miss Brooks? Perfect, Mr. Boynton. You've got a very soft shoulder. <laughs> now, now, hang on tight. It's more important that you hang on tight. <laughs> Here we go. Hey, pretty creaky ladder. Oh, I thought it was me. <laughs> Just a few more rungs. Now we'll set you right down on good old terra firma. There. Thank you for a very pleasant trip. Oh, good for you, Mr. Boynton. That was a perfect carry. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? I'd do it again in a minute. So would I. So long, Walter. <laughs> Just a second. I've got to climb up to Harriet's room and practice getting some more valuables down to safety. Where is Harriet, Walter? Well, when Mr. Boynton and I take our test, they're going to simulate actual fire conditions. So Harriet went to borrow a smudge pot. A smudge pot? Where are you going to take this test? In an orange grove? Oh, that's just to make a lot of smoke So we get the feeling that we're really saving somebody Oh Well, I'll see you in a few minutes, folks well, Don't carry too much down this trip, Wally You've got the driveway loaded with bric-a-brac now Okay Well, Miss Brooks, it's, it's quite a nice evening, isn't it? Yes, it is Especially for this kind of work If you don't mind a third opinion I think it's a perfect night for this kind of work why, it's a policeman. Hello, officer. Yes, hello, officer. Uh, I suppose you'd like an explanation as to what we're doing here. Take your time. I've already made a wild guess. <laughs> well, what do you mean? The evidence is all around you. Now, let's not waste each other's time. Where's the getaway car? Getaway car? Oh, officer, you don't think we're common, ordinary thieves, do you? Oh, on the contrary, I think you're extraordinary. <laughs> you know, it isn't everyone who'd put a ladder up in a driveway right off the street at nine o'clock at night. But, obviously, you don't understand. I I'm a teacher at Madison High School. I'm a teacher at Madison High, too. Poverty is no excuse. <laughs> Do you know whose home this is you've been looting? But, officer, we haven't been looting. Look out below. Here I come, and I'm loaded. <laughs> ah, another Confederate with a lamp and a vase under his arm. That happens to be Walter Denton, and he's a student of ours. He's learned his lessons well. <laughs> Here, let me give you a hand, son. Oh, thanks very much. 
Oh, that was a cinch. I just... Oops, it's the law. <laughs> what are you acting so guilty about, Walter? Yes, Walter. Whatever you do, don't act guilty. Of course not. Just brazen it out. Oh, what am I saying? <laughs> now, come along with me, all of you. I'm taking you down to the station. But, officer, you've got to listen. You... Good evening, officer. Hi, folks. Look what I got. Another one. <laughs> Where have you been? Working the other side of the house? <laughs> Straighten him out, Harriet. He thinks we're a bunch of crooks. Crooks? But I live here, officer. I'm Harriet Conklin, and, and these are my friends. I just went down the block to borrow this smudge pot. Smudge pot? And what are you going to do with that? I'm going to put it in my bedroom. <laughs> if that doesn't answer your question, you're a disgrace to your uniform. <laughs> Don't you see, officer? Mr. Boynton here and my boyfriend, Walter, have joined the volunteer fire department, and they're just practicing for their ladder test. The smudge pot is just to make it seem more realistic. Well, look. Here's my key ring with my name and address and the key to the front door. Doesn't that convince you that I live here? Well, I could have been mistaken, I guess. I beg your pardon, folks. Oh, that's okay, officer. Anybody can make a mistake. Good night, officer. Not so fast. <laughs> I suggest that you be a little more careful about who you go around calling crooks. What? You heard me, and if it happens again, I'll have you back pounding a beat. <laughs> but I am pounding a beat. <laughs> Well, then, I'll see that you get a dirty badge. <laughs> well, Martha, we're almost home. I only hope we're in time. But, Osgood, driving home in the middle of the evening like this, I think your suspicions are fantastic. Just because we find out the Silver Slipper's been closed for a month... Why should you get the wild idea that Walter and Harriet are eloping? It came to me in a flash. <laughs> Only this morning, Harriet threatened to run away with that lame brain dunce. Then Miss Brooks came to my office with that cock and bull story about seeing Jason Brill at the Silver Slipper last week. But Osgood... Miss Brooks instigated the whole plot to get me out of the house tonight. But Osgood, that's absurd. You might just as well say that, that Miss Brooks was going to elope with Walter. Believe me, they deserve each other. <laughs> well, here we are. Martha, look. What? There's a ladder up against Harriet's window. They're climbing down right now. Come on. Stand right where you are. Mr. Conklin, what are you doing home so early? Never mind that. What are you two up to? Watch out down there. Why, that's Mr. Boynton coming down the ladder, but what's that he's got over his shoulder? <laughs> Looks like a sack of meal to me. <laughs> if that's who I think it is, I might as well be. Yeah, here we are. Mr. Conklin, you're home. Yes, I'm home. And not a minute too soon from the looks of things. Now, there's no reason to get excited, Mr. Conklin. We'd have told you all about it sooner or later. Now, that's extremely decent of you. <laughs> Could you do this, Walter? Why not? He's had plenty of practice. <laughs> we know why Denton's here, but you, Boynton, how did you get into this? He just answered a call for volunteers. <laughs> volunteers? Well, sure. And it was the same thing with Walter. Yeah, it looks a lot more dangerous than it is. After all, it isn't like I haven't tried it before. <laughs> You've tried it before? Many times. But you're so young. You're never too young to start. <laughs> Boynton, you amaze me. And so do you, Miss Brooks. I know you're extremely fond of Mr. Boynton, but just what did you mean by that remark about volunteers? Well, it's fairly obvious. I just meant that Mr. Boynton will only be called upon in an emergency. <laughs> an emergency? Certainly. Supposing the regular department is busy, somebody's got to put out the fire. <laughs> I don't understand a bit of this. What are these things doing in the driveway? It isn't enough that you were all going to elope. You were taking my furniture along to set up housekeeping. <laughs> Mr. Conklin, we weren't eloping. Mr. Boynton and I were just practicing for our volunteer fireman's test. A likely story. What does the fire department need volunteers for? 
There aren't enough fires in this town to keep a seltzer bottle busy. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Osgood. It never hurts to be prepared. Of course not. Now, take that smoke that's coming from Harriet's window, for instance. Smoke? M- Martha! It's smoke! Our house is on fire! Please, Daddy, don't get so excited. It's only... Quiet, Harriet. A man's got a right to get excited when his house is on fire. Fortunately, Mr. Boynton is here to put it right out. But that smoke's being caused by... Never mind the cause. You're the cure. (laughs) Up you go, Mr. Boynton. We'll show Mr. Conklin how lucky he is that we happen to be in the vicinity tonight. Oh, I get it. Here I go, folks. I'll put out that blaze. Don't you think we should call the regular department? (laughs) Oh, no. Not with Chief Boynton on the job. Go to it, Chief. I'm right behind you, Chief. Miss Brooks, why are you climbing the ladder? Because Mr. Boynton only knows one way to get down. (laughs) Where is he going to find a sack of meal in a burning building? (laughs) Eve Arden is our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight, show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives you K. Dumont's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Better than a soap, better than a liquid, luster cream is a dainty cream shampoo. Leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. You owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, Mr. Conklin was so relieved when his house didn't burn down that he let Mr. Boynton, Walter, and myself go scot-free. It was still early, so I suggested, after we dropped Walter off, that Mr. Boynton could get a little more experience by climbing up to the roof of Mrs. Davis's house. Much to my surprise, he agreed. Now, about this fireman's carry, Miss Brooks... Let me help, Mr. Boynton. First, I put my right arm over your left shoulder, then my left arm around your right shoulder. Now, I join my hands behind your neck. Now, hold me tight, Mr. Boynton. Tighter. A little tighter, please. (laughs) There, that's fine. Yes, that does seem about right. But, Miss Brooks, where's the ladder? Ladder? (laughs) Don't be silly. I kicked that away long ago. (laughs) Brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, written by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Yes, 36 leading skin specialists proved in tests on 1,285 different women that palm olive soap facials using nothing but palm olive brought new complexion beauty to two women out of three. Just wash your face three times daily with palm olive soap. Each time for 60 seconds, massaging palm olive's beauty lather onto your skin. Then rinse and pat dry. So start your palm olive facials today. Remember, doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.